Good morning, everyone. Again, thank you very much for coming in this morning. Detective Senior Constable Damien Leading is still critically ill in the intensive care unit at the Gold Coast Base Hospital. He will have further medical examinations today and advice will be provided to his family and loved ones in that regard. We continue to update all police officers and the police family after the updates are given to his family in relation to his ongoing medical condition. And I do appreciate the media and your support and uh, I will make that available later to you in the day. Our prayers and thoughts are with him. He's an exceptional officer. He epitomises what a modern detective is about. At eight and a half years service, just recently achieved his detective classification, which is an extremely important achievement for all detectives. He has served his eight and a half years of policing in the Gold Coast. As you're all aware, it is the busiest policing environment in Queensland, if not Australia. He was a constable at Surface Paradise and then a detective at the Gold Coast CIB, Re Northern Regional Group, based at Surface Paradise and then 18 months ago was one of the founding detectives at the new Coomera District CIB. Both he and his wife are police officers, as you're aware. They met and graduated within months of each other from our Peace Academy in 2003. She is attached to the Gold Coast Police and as you're also aware, um, they have a newly born three-month-old child, another child. Damien just returns from some parenting, which again is a trait of our modern police officer. He's extremely fit. For those that know, he's a tri local triathlete and um, has been one of the lead investigators in relation to our large amounts of armed robberies in the Gold Coast and Coombe area. As I said, he personifies what is a career police officer, a very experienced, competent and capable young man. As you're aware, the three offenders will be appearing in the Southport Magistrates Court this morning and it is highly inappropriate of me to comment any further in relation to that. Our forensic police are still at the scene of this incident and they're conducting further examinations, which is a thorough and complete ballistics examination of the scene in relation to what has actually taken place. At this point, I am unable to comment further in that and it again would be inappropriate of me until those investigations are complete. I do like to thank all our wonderful friends at the Queensland Ambulance Service, the staff at the Gold Coast Hospital um, and for their great support in relation to the events that have occurred. Also our wonderful friends from the OCS Emergency Services that helped with the search of the area yesterday. As you're aware, the police were first response. Damien and his detective partner, we would also like to acknowledge a female officer who also has her entire career in the Gold Coast. She is attached to our Coomera Child Investigation Unit, also has seven and a half years policing service, again in an area that is extremely busy. The investigation, as I said, is uh, progressing extremely well and um, have a large team of detectives as we do in this type of major incident that occurs here quite regularly and they're very, very experienced in making these investigations. At this point in time, we are asking for any other member of the public that would have any other information concerning the armed robbery at the Pacific Pines Tavern last Sunday evening, which occurred shortly after 10.30 or around 10.30 p.m. last Sunday evening. At this stage, we, would we believe that we have all of the accused persons in relation to this matter, but we are still desirous of any further information in relation to that. I'm happy to field any questions. How are the fellow officers uh, handling it? 
at the moment. As, as it is in this situation, as the police commander, I have two responsibilities. I have to investigate a major serious crime involving our officers, and we have the requirements in accordance with law to ensure that's done correctively, correctly, independently, and ultimately these matters end up in the Supreme Court in a couple of years' time. So we have to then um, involve the local officers, but move in experienced other officers from other areas to make sure. Uh, at this point in time the officers in the Coomera district, as you know Damien's from the Gold Coast area which are very close so they're all being well supported and as always as I've said previously this for police officers and any other person in emergency services particularly police officers um, our gravest fears and our worst nightmare. Are they actually being um, working on the case, the Coomera detectives, or are they, have they been taken off because of their closeness to Damien? They are working um, in the area, but they aren't working on the case. Um, Detective Senior Sergeant Proctor is there, um, as are other detectives, but uh, the chief investigators of this investigation are my senior detective inspectors and detective senior sergeants from Logan, Gold Coast, some of the state's most qualified and experienced detectives, plus detectives from our state homicide group, uh, heading up all of the major teams in relation to this investigation. I do have the resources of other areas, but at this point in time, um, they are the main investigators, some of the state's most experienced investigators. And um, the Coomera detectives at this time uh, are not participating in what you would term as the ongoing investigation in relation to this, but you must be very mindful they were part of the first response. They have obligations to ensure that all of their um, evidentiary gathering, their observations and all their activities are done, and that was done yesterday balancing up the welfare side of things but that has to be done and um, they are still uh, in the area but are not participating in the investigation per se. Um, Bluey O'Gorman was on the ABC this morning saying that um, that there's a crisis, a crime crisis on the Gold Coast and he wouldn't, wouldn't feel safe um, you know, even filling up his car at, the, at a service station at, at the moment the way things are. How, how do you respond to that sort of from, a, from an very experienced police officer? I know Mr O'Gorman personally, I've known him for a long time and uh, he's entitled to his comments in retirement um, and, uh, but the armed robberies this year um, and as I said I will uh, talk about the statistics exactly later for you in the morning the, are similar to they have been in recent years the armed robbery statistics over the last decade have had seen a reduction um, in the area we currently sit between 40 and 45 per cent clear up rate in the area. Any armed robbery is serious. As you're aware, in recent decade or so, the trend has been towards softer targets of service stations, 24 hour food outlets, and shopping centres rather than the traditional um, financial institutions as they were decades ago. Um, but and hotels these days seem to be classed into that um, softer target area. Uh, the issue is investigation. As I said, every armed robbery is one too many. But the other part of policing, ladies and gentlemen, is crime prevention. And we are working with the Chamber of Commerce that you wear here on the Gold Coast in Coomera. We are working with our crime prevention people. We are working with the chains of service stations, fast food outlets and other activities to provide um, advice in relation to securing up their premises to put modern, more safer environments with their staff and their environment. We continually look at the modern trends around the world in that regard and, and continue to give people advice. So it's a two-pronged approach. One is crime prevention and two um, is unfortunately the responding and the investigation um, in relation to them. And uh, it's very, very important that we have both arms of policing um, addressing both the issues. There's no doubt you are doing a, a lot to, to prevent this sort of thing, but even last night, I believe, just after the night after the police officer was shot during an armed robbery, we had another two armed robberies on the Gold Coast. You must be just extremely frustrated. 
Extremely frustrating and it's, and it's very, very dangerous and serious and we continue to ask people to be extremely vigilant in relation to it. Um, we in the police investigate and uh, we are just the one part of the criminal justice system in that process. Can you stop this? I mean, realistically, can, can you put a dent in this given the huge amount of attention that that one has gathered the other night and then two more last night? Look, we uh, can continue to investigate them and, um, and again, um, as I said, the, the police are that part of the criminal justice system that deal with it. We investigate it and put it before the courts. Uh, again, uh, we will continue to be vigilant in all the resources that we have, which are crime prevention and investigative strategies, and again, through yourselves, uh, through the media, through the community, um, through the community itself um, and the business houses um, in urging to make sure that we look at that, but also the community support groups um, and from my intelligence a lot of these people that commit these offences um, are people that uh, uh, um, have, have drug habits and uh, in relation to those activities. So there's a whole range of other areas that um, are, can look at um, what we can do in relation to looking at this overall problem in society. Um, there's economic issues that are impacting upon society today, um, there's social issues in relation to drugs um, and uh, we the police service are uh, the front line, um, one arm of the entire system that needs a community approach to address these issues. And um, you can be rest assured uh, that we are. Uh, my police officers are very alert to their operational, as you well know. This area is by far the busiest policing environment that I command from the New South Wales Queensland border to Eight Mile Plains and west to Bow Desert of Gold Coast, Coomera and Logan districts by far the busiest policing environment in Queensland on a daily basis and um, of course my police are very vigilant. When I leave here this morning I go out and welcome 20 new police recruits and you can all be rest assured as you would be that we talk about the vigilance um, and operational vigilance that they will need in this policing environment. If you, um, are you going to have you or will you recommend to the Commissioner that, that we have a, an armed robbery squad or a major crime squad on the Gulf uh, in light of What's Look, the issue that uh, the Commissioner has discussed that, it's got a lot of uh, comment in recent time. He's the Commissioner of the Queensland Police Service. I'm part of his executive. He and I have had uh, discussions in relation to this matter. I did get an extra 14 detectives recently. In almost my four decades of policing, that is the largest increase of detective staff I've seen in once. I allocated 10 of them to the Gold Coast CIB and four of them to the Coomera CIB. And as you're aware, the Gold Coast District and the Coomera District make up the Gold Coast City Council area, which we all, for all public purposes, talk about being Gold Coast. Um, and uh, that increase uh, was a first to my personal experience. Um, we would, as a police commander, always like extra resources. I can use extra resources all the time but what we have to understand is there is only so many extra police recruited and it's statistically shown that this policing region, in particular the New Coomera District, Gold Coast and Logan, um, where I am, we get a major proportion of the annual distribution of extra policing staff. Uh, at this point in time they're the resources I've got would I like more resources? Yes, any police commander anywhere in policing in the world would. But um, in relation to this type of armed robbery, it's not the traditional armed robbery. We know that the armed robbery squad that were formed historically in policing, and they are a, a squad as a result of a range of issues in strategically in policing no longer tend to exist in policing. It's more termed organised and major crime generally. But these robberies, whilst there has been some groups of young people in the Logan area and others that have in fact been little groups, they aren't traditionally what we call organised and major crime. Um, there is uh, as you're all aware, a large number of offences in this Gold Coast area that fit into organised and major crime and uh, we do work very closely with State Crime Operations Command, that's the big detective command at headquarters and whilst there they do provide a lot of resources down here. There currently um, is a full time team here working with my local detectives, Operation Alliance, um, and they've had uh, some 
huge successes in the last three years since I've been here when that's been implemented in not only offenders in relation to robberies, property crime, um, we also work closely with the outlaw biker gang uh, from State Crime Command. Uh, the majority of the State Crime Command work is here in that Gold Coast area, uh, particularly in frauds as well. Um, so the squads do come here the majority of the time. Um, the actually to set up an armed robbery squad um, here, the general detectives investigate this type, but as you're aware, the volume of homicides and other crime that does occur in this area, uh, they are extremely busy, which would have been the dis part of the decision of my request recently for extra detective staff and the allocation of 14. The matter is on the table, as the Commissioner says, um, and uh, I've had discussions with him in relation to it, and um, the resources of State Crime Command in conjunction with my people, um, I'm talking to the Assistant Commissioner there again today, strategically looking at what we can continue to do to investigate um, these uh, armed robberies and um, in part of uh, the crime problem here um, and as I said they don't fit into the police definition of organised a major crime but they are still very serious crimes uh, with the violence that's occurring that we need to work together with the community and receive information as we did in this particular matter from someone that saw um, this offence taking place on Sunday night. It was reports you mentioned before about the ballistics experts at the scene trying to work out what exactly happened out there. There were reports that we had heard about that there were shots fired, not just one shot that, uh, that hit Damien. Do you know if he fired his gun? At this stage it would be inappropriate for me to comment. I am briefed on it um, and uh, in due course um, depending on the persons now being charged before the court. Um, I am confident to say that um, there is more than one shot being fired. But at this point it would be highly inappropriate for me to comment, and especially that my ballistics experts are still um, working through um, that. And it, it, as you well understand, it does well and truly take some time to work through these crime scenes. We still have the crime scene, and we'll probably have it as for the most of today as well. As you are aware, there was more than one shot fired. I am prepared to say that. Those 14 positions, how many of them have been filled? Um, the paperwork has, has come to my desk, and um, when you offer uh, senior detectives in charge of areas 14 extra positions, you can be rest assured uh, well and truly the process is expedited, and um, I'm very confident to have them on the ground. Um, the detectives here have been, as you know, for decades, and in particularly recent times, under a lot of scrutiny, and we have worked extremely hard um, in our recruitment of them, um, bearing in mind all of that, it is uh, that scrutiny that does occur and the unfortunate media coverage that occurred with Operation Tesco, um, it is often a struggle to get police to come and work in this environment. And uh, But you can be rest assured that the paperwork is on my desk. We have turned that around and um, I, we have selectively selected some very senior detectives to come in who are heading up this investigation and as I say in my experience some of the most competent and capable detectives the service has. So when will they, start? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they progressively come online as you can understand in your own professions in your own organisations people come and go all the time and with a, a, a policing staff, sworn staff of, of 1,400 and approximately 4,500 unsworn staff I have a large movement of staff all around um, so they would be coming online today, next week, um, but you could be rest assured they would all be online within the next couple of uh, months. Just Commissioner, you said that um, uh, City Constable Lending's condition is still critical. Uh, have you received any advice that it has stabilised or improved at all overnight? It is stable um, and, it, and of course uh, with these uh, serious head injuries the first uh, first 24 hours uh, in relation to them from the advice I've received from the neurosurgeons um, is critical in relation to that. Are you aware of his son, father uh, coming over to the Gold Coast? I am aware and I'm aware of the media reports that he, his father does live in England and we uh, have been in touch with him 
and uh, I'm aware and expecting him to arrive in the, the not too distant future. Are you talking about this afternoon or today, tonight? Or? In the not too, in the next day or so. Is it, um, it's correct that I heard that the QPS had, um, had <coughs> paid for his flights out, is that? That's incorrect. Oh, yeah. You're helping his father and his sister to, to get here, but they both live overseas as far as you're aware? The sister is, and uh, the service is helping the sister. So you mentioned the Chamber of working with the Chamber of Commerce. There was a presentation here recently in conjunction with them. I, I think seven thousand people were advised, and only twenty turned up. Is that is that a bit frustrating? Or? Look, it, it, one person I'll talk to. I go to a lot of functions and talk at a lot of events. Um, when you have a, a breakfast in the morning that the Chamber of Commerce has, what you've got to understand, a lot of people that run small businesses um, are there like us all at 7am in the morning opening them up. And, of course, their priorities and the current economic climate and other activities require them to um, look at those things. Um, and... Um, but what we do, we, we go to them, uh, but what we do is we proactively go out to, as I said, other food chains, other ho uh, store chains, hotels. Um, we have had some other ones through Chambers of Commerce in the Cooma District we've had, where we've had um, uh, dozens of people turn up. Um, and um, as I say with my crime prevention staff, we're happy to go to them seven days a week, which we do do, and uh, you're all aware of them. And um, so, again, um, it may be the number are down on that occasion um, and that's disappointing but each and every one of those people have a network and we have our crime prevention email network where we send out um, our crime bulletins um, electronically to people uh, the service now has a Facebook site uh, and we do all of those modern media information sessions and again but um, police uh, we rely upon information and again um, in relation to that I urge as well as our crime prevention well, I urge all the community to continue to provide us with this information and from my decades of experience uh, in solving a lot of major and, and organised crime it's that information we receive from the public which it is vital and that marvellous institution being created of Crime Stoppers allows people to provide that in information with amenity and, uh, and we work through it and um, so a Yes, it is disappointing, but we again ask people to be vigilant, uh, to consult with my staff, consult with their areas um, in relation to um, what we can do to improve um, community safety, especially in this area of, of soft targets. But it is a community response that needs to occur. Mr. Wilson, so were you briefed you... on the ambulance hold-up last night, talking about soft targets? Were you briefed on the hold-up of the ambulance? Hold -up? I am aware of that, and uh, the offender has been arrested and charged, and... Um, of the incident in relation to that, I am aware of it. So how, how do you describe an attack like that? Um, look, it, it is before the court. It, to me, when uh, there is a armed hold-up on ambulance officers going about their duties, um, that is to the core of society. Here we are having people responding to uh, provide medical assistance to people and uh, I have spoken to my counterpart at the ambulance service, the Assistant Commissioner Barnes last night about it um, in relation to it just after it happened uh, my police, the detectives and general police court uh, the offenders and uh, offender I beg your pardon and he'll be going to court now that really when people are providing assistance like that um, that really goes to the heart of society. And is there a message you'd like to get across if there are people contemplating armed robbery, small targets, soft targets like this, if they're watching, what would you say to them? Look, if these people are people that have de dependent habits, uh, which time and time again appears to be uh, the motive behind a lot of this getting small amounts of cash, uh, there are agencies that are available. And this is when I talk about the community becoming involved, uh, not just the law enforcement, and we're only one part of, of the criminal justice system. There are a lot of other wonderful agencies that do exist um, here in the Gold Coast um, in, in areas that can provide assistance for these people um, in relation to to, if they do have other uh, problems uh, in relation to a possible habit, uh, a dependence, um, if people are destitute and they need money for other, as a result of the economic conditions, there are a range of agencies that do there and are provided. And I'm sure if, um, if they spoke to my officers or to anyone in that aid and welfare support community, there are. 
but unfortunately uh, on, a, on a number of these occasions uh, these people are um, affected by substance abuse when these things occur and that does worry us as well and that's why everyone needs to be vigilant and we do urge people not to, not to take weapons themselves into their own hands because it could inflame the situation and I understand people's frustrations in this regard, frustrations, very extreme frustrations, but it can also exacerbate the scenario quite severely and themselves, their loved ones and everyone else uh, can be seriously injured and possibly killed. Are there too many grubs living on the Gold Coast, do you think? Oh look, the society of the Gold Coast um, is in some of my areas, we have uh, a huge multicultural um, society. Um, there is a lot of people on the Gold Coast. It is a very, very international, popular tourist destination and a very popular place for people to come, has been historically all my life and all of yours. Um, in relation to commenting as to the type of people that inhabit the Gold Coast, I'll leave that for others. Do we need tougher penalties? That's what the opposition is calling for today. Do the courts need to be tougher? The police service's role is to investigate the matters professionally in accordance with our Westminster system and uh, my system is, is to investigate them and put them before the court. Uh, your question is one that um, is for our uh, parliamentary arm of the, of the Westminster system that we live in and um, we investigate them and as I said we are that part of the criminal justice system but in the courts. Given how invested you are in that process, do you not find it disappointing sometimes when you, you know, you're presenting a case that's tied up with a bow? and uh, it sort of doesn't get the penalty it seems to deserve? As a career detective and been involved in numerous major criminal investigations right throughout my career, yes, that does occur, you do get disappointed. But that's why we've got to be extremely vigilant and that's why as the police commander here, when this matter occurred on Sunday night, I thoughts are well and truly to the future as presenting this matter in the Supreme Court in a couple of years' time. And I'm very cognizant of what's required, of the high standard we have in our Westminster system, which is vital, and of course um, doing that. But of course, I personally believe we have one of the best systems in the world and that um, we are well looked after in that regard, and that's the, the system we have. When we look at the news around the world daily, um, I think we do do extremely well in that regard. Um, but yes, to answer you, from my perspective, I have been frustrated, but again, as a police commander, we have to work through that yeah. and we have to independently do it and continue to um, investigate all matters as they have come to us. Pretty loaded target. An ambulance officer just trying to help, do you think? And ambulance officers, yes, look, they are vulnerable. They've, their focus is purely for the preservation of life and people, and we do work very closely with their communication centre, our communication centre here on the Gold Coast um, in relation to us responding to jobs of, with them. But again, um, I can't talk further about this particular matter or the uh, weapon or anything used in relation to it, but um, it, is, uh, it does get on the lower end of the scale there. How many crime prevention officers do you have here on the Gold Coast? In this office here we have, uh, at the regional level, we have a highly qualified um, uh, civilian and a senior sergeant. We have a, a sergeant and four officers at the Gold Coast. At Coomera, so that's six. At Coomera office we have um, another two. And at Logan we have a team of, uh, of four there. But to answer your question, I have 1,400. I have 1,400 crime prevention officers, every police officer who goes out uh, to every scene, in particular our forensic people that go to the scenes of crime and examinations. They're all trained in crime prevention and when they talk to people at premises and houses, they then turn around and provide advice. So whilst we might have um, a dozen coordinating it throughout the region and we tap in with all the latest trends from worldwide, um, every police officer um, is, in my opinion, a crime prevention officer in giving advice to the community. Given that you turn the tide on uh, the robberies of financial institutions, is this the same sort of campaign that you're launching now, you know, to try and get these people to improve? Is it a similar or is it an unrealistic goal? Well, the one major difference between financial institutions and and um, 
what we term smaller, softer targets, um, is the financial institutions and international multinational um, organisations that have possibly a large budget that can look for modern um, things in relation to crime prevention. Whereas if you get someone that is just going into a small business um, and then we ask or we suggest um, that they spend a considerable amount of money in relation to the latest um, electronic surveillance, they <coughs> may not have that. So there's got to be, again, you've got to take all those factors into consideration. Um, and again, uh, the financial institutions of the armed robberies that I experienced in my bulk of my career of them in the, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Um, and electronic banking has been one of the greatest advantages for us there. We all used to get paid in cash and that's what the car rail robberies were about. Now we all get uh, paid electronically into our electronic bank accounts. So things have changed, but unfortunately we've still got to go to service stations and pay for fuel. We've still got to go to supermarkets, fast food outlets to, to get the essentials of, of life daily in relation to that and uh, where people go and where people congregate and buy things. Unfortunately, we still have these robberies. So I'll... Thank you. Thank you. Later today, if you want to talk about